Our next speaker uh, is going to be covering digital transformation, uh, challenges and opportunities uh, for the advertising uh, industry. Um, so uh, right after this, uh, we'll be uh, updating you on the program uh, for the afternoon. But before then, uh, please welcome uh, the Head of Marketing Communications for SAP Exchange Media in Germany, uh, Johann Freilinger. Johann. First of all, thank you for letting me speak today. Um, some of you may wonder why SAP is presenting here today. And some of you may have seen SAP, have used SAP, but you may not have recognized SAP as a player in this market. So let me give you some numbers just to get you familiar. So we have 80% SAP today so it's 80% of the global 2,000 companies. 98% of the world's most valuable brands. And 74% of all of the world's transactions go through an SAP system or touch an SAP system. So that's why we're here today, because one of the last areas that may not work as efficient or technologically sophisticated as others is the marketing and advertising industry. Let's talk a little bit about the marketing and advertising industry. So today, and from an advertising, advertiser's perspective, and we heard a little bit about programmatic earlier, 60% of the budget of the media budget is lost in the value chain. So if you look at this in absolute numbers, even, even if everything that is spent online today, which is 170 billion US dollars, approximately, we could argue a few billion more or less, how much would that be lost? 100 billion. So when you from an advertiser's perspective, spend 170 billion worldwide, and you lose 100 billion to middlemen in this value chain, something is wrong. It's just too big of a problem to ignore. Second fact, more than 75% of you in the US, of US online consumers don't trust ads, and that number is even worse in digital. What's the sense of sending ads if you don't trust them? What's the sense of paying money to place ads? And for you, that is a lost opportunity to monetize your content. Uh, your, your, sorry, to, your, to monetize your media inventory. Third fact, ad blocking, and we heard a lot about this today, grew by 41% globally in 2015 and it's estimated to cost you guys around, around 22 billion. That's, in total numbers, 198 million users that blocked ads in 2015. Okay, some of these numbers you've, you, you're probably aware of, some of the, these you may not be aware of, but let's talk about some solutions and why I'm standing here today and why I'm talking about SAP be becoming a part of this market and transforming this market. The first question that we had when we founded SAP XM was, do we really create relevant advertising? I mean, let's think back a couple, 10, 20 years. There was a lot of effort spent in, being, in thinking about, is advertising relevant to the one that perceives it? No one would. No one would block ads if it was relevant to them, right? I mean, if it's, if it's relevant to me because I'm looking for, for new clothes or if I'm looking for, for a car or if I'm looking to buy a house or if I'm looking to finance a house or whatever it is, the situation is I am in, in my personal life, then I wouldn't block it. I only block it if it pesters me, if it spams me, if it irritates me, 
if it keeps me from reading content, if it keeps me from consuming what I'm interested in. So that is why the purpose of SAP XM is to provide a tool to again create relevant advertising. What does it mean? When we have ad blockers today, we need to make them ad lovers again. We created the ad blockers, us. We are responsible for creating ad blockers, no one else. There's networks blocking ads, all of this, we heard about this, yes. But if I want to consume advertising, I will not block it. So we need to make it relevant again, like it was before we started to use data and, to, and, and other information about consumers with the, maybe I would say, with a mindset of figuring them out. If somebody tries to figure you out, you will block him. But if somebody gathers data and information about you to serve your needs and does that in a friendly and transparent and open way, you would say, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that because I get relevance back from it. The second, so, so there, has been some, there have been some very relevant publications been made recently in the advertisers world. One is uh, called Entangled Marketing from Stan, Stan Rapp. Stan Rapp is 92 years old now, but he's a direct marketing legend and he plays in the same league like uh, David Ogilvy. And the uh, book that he brought, that, that he published was about entangled marketing. It talks to how do we make, create our friends for, our, for, for the brands that we're talking about, that place advertisements, right? So it's, a, it's an approach that says, I may even want to step back for a while advertising to you as an individual because I may have nothing to say at this moment. The only role I can take, and you know that with, with friends, is sometimes to just listen because you cannot provide value at this moment. So we should stop really to trying to pester people by the old reach model. Second, when we think about, or third, when we think about connecting through technology, think about a world where publishers and advertisers are corrected, connected directly. That is beyond programmatic. That is not just automated buying and selling. That is an ecosystem like the next Uber. The next Uber for online advertising. The next Airbnb for online advertising. It's not Uber and Airbnb is quite complicated, actually, because you have physical assets. It's, it's complicated, right? This is all digital. Why should it not be possible that if we serve 98% of the most valuable brands on the publisher and on the advertiser side to connect them directly, cut the waste that is in the middle, connect them directly, and kill the waste, kill the 100 billion waste that we have. So I already said that it could end in same budget, twice the effect. Because today, you lose, you, you can only turn 75, 40% 40, uh, 40 of your inventory from, of your budget into inventory from an advertiser's standpoint. Now, if you could make that 75%, Imagine what it means for marketers. Imagine what it means for marketers. I listened to uh, the Pepsi company president last week, week before last in New York, and he, he had a great speech at the, at the Harvard Club, and he talked about, and Pepsi, as you know, is a, is, all, is a brand that lives from advertising. And he talked about the one object in his home that didn't work, or that was the most discarded object he had in his home. It's a television. It's the most discarded object. So when we talk about advertising <clears throat> as, a, as, a, as an overall, we talk about $500 billion, correct? But when we talk about the future of advertising, we talk about online advertising. Because that's where the younger generation is. They discard 
the television. My daughters don't watch television. They are on their mobile devices all day long, 12 and 16 years old. Okay, why do we pay in advance as advertisers? For advertising that we haven't even consumed yet in a digital world. Do you think you pay in advance on Amazon? Does that make sense? Why would you pay in advance for online media? Stupid. Why wouldn't you pay for online media when you place your ad and when your ad is actually displayed as an advertiser? Doesn't make sense. And why then, if you think about it, if you could do that end to end, wouldn't you just connect ERP system to ERP system and you do real-time procurement? You buy ads, and while you do that, you pay for it. It's completely paperless. This is all digital. So, next point, fraud. Fraud. I mean, in digital, why would we have fraud? How could we ever accept that? Everything is measurable in digital. So, advertisers lost more than seven billion, according to the recent studies, to fraud. Bot traffic, domain spoofing, viewability issues, all the stuff that you heard while you were here. So, and then every campaign that runs from an advertiser's perspective to hit their audience, needs to be optimized. This is not print. This is not TV. This is not produced and done. So if I, if I look at the way this is optimized today, this is not optimal. This is suboptimal. There's a break between the media agency and the advertiser and the publisher. Why is that? Why don't we make completely transparent how our ads perform end to end in a closed loop? And why are we not able, in digital, to look at more than just clicks and cost per meal and, and cost per clicks? Why can't we measure from the initial ad spend to the sales result? Why shouldn't that be possible? Why shouldn't we be able to measure and, and optimize advertising on, based on sales? So usually you don't have one campaign, you have hundreds of campaigns, hundreds. You have flights, you're, you're in various countries as an advertiser, you have to control all this, and then you have hundreds of vendors, uh, and you have probably, if you stick to the old model, one media agency network that does all of this for you so, the, so, you, so that you have a consistent kind of view that you can report back. The systems are used by media specialists. Why? You all have personal computers. Do you need a training to open up an Apple, Apple computer and, and, and start to run programs on it? No. Why would you think you need that for, for, for this world any longer? So why don't we have control about our spend on the advertiser side and on the consumption of inventory on the publisher side in real time, at all organizational levels. There's no reason for that anymore. Then let's view marketing and campaign results in context. Let's say I give you an example. Biostuff runs a campaign across Europe, and the campaign performs well in every country except for Italy. From a marketer standpoint, you would think, ah, but that's maybe because the model is blonde-haired and has blue eyes, and it, Italians have another idea of how good people look like. Now, if you knew that L'Oreal was investing at the same target group three times the amount, then you would have context. And that's what I'm talking about. You would know why your campaign in Italy doesn't run as well like in the other countries, and that has nothing to do maybe with the initial campaign. And that's where we talk about things like the digital boardroom, uh, the digital boardroom where you can have a fact-based fact discussion in a contextual setting. And where you look at your marketing results, you look at your uh, um, sales results, you look at your 
pro uh, new products, you look at whatever concerns you, you look at environmental information, so you have a contextually guided discussion instead of just a siloed discussion. So then if you had, and I said this would be, this will be the next Uber, the next Airbnb for online media advertising, if you had millions of campaigns on that platform, why wouldn't you then look or check if you're better than your competition? You would benchmark actually against your competition instead of just against yourself. It doesn't help me much if I know that my stuff as a marketer performs a little better than last year. So what? If, my, if, my industry ben if I'm way below industry benchmark, why would I care? So here I can see for the first time how, my, how an industry performs. And then why would, I, why would I want to not be free in choosing my vendors as per country? Why would I, I mean, every, let's say we, we hire a, a, a big network to do our job on media worldwide as a marketer. That's fine. But maybe in France, they are on number 799. And, 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 and our French team says, and we, don't want to want, we, we don't want to work with these guys. We want our own choice. Now, with a platform like this, one standard, they can work with whomever they want. Now, if we have so many campaigns on this and we have algorithms and we can learn, then we can predict. What does that do to us? We can simulate. You, we all drive, some of you drive cars with side wind assistance. You get a big blow and the car automatically stabilizes. Imagine it like this. You plan a campaign and you avoid the usual mistakes. You would do, you will get guidance, you will get help in how to optimize and you can simulate. Your chances of success are much higher. Now, we talked about optimi optimization. Uh, optimization of campaigns in parts can be done in an automated way but in parts should, should be done by creative and very intelligent people. So it's a mix of both, and we heard that earlier when we listened to some other presenters, that it is very important to have the human interface, but it's also very important to have best-in-class technology to help you find, to find the right solutions, not to dominate you, but to find the right solutions to optimize. Now, what was in the past for media specialists? We believe this is now for everyone. A CMO, a CEO, a CIO, all the complete executive suite can see results across their company in real time. And that may not be the same view needed that a media planner needs. He needs much, much more detail. But it will be an aggregated view that provides context and that helps me to see where I stand with this in my company. And the same is obviously true for publishers. I will have a real, real-time view, not batched like Google, a real, real-time view where I can see where I stand with my inventory, what is sold, what is not sold, and I can, I can place it accordingly. So there's direct access. There's no middleman in between, directly you and the advertiser. So we believe that's a way to make advertising relevant again. We think it's long overdue. We think advertisers and publishers should connect directly, leveraging best-in-class technology for managing their campaigns in real time end-to-end, -end, including procurement, including targeting, planning, everything that you can imagine. And we've started this uh, one, and, one and a half years ago, my boss sits over there, Dr. Wolfgang Feist. Um, we will want to show you the first prototype of this. We will bring this to the market this year, and we are building on it. 
We are building on it with large advertisers. We are building on it with some of the publishers you saw today that presented here to make this a better world. And I would like to invite you to look at the prototype. We have it here. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.